go. There's a nice upper Mississippi River northern pike caught with help from Mega Live's landscape mode. Now landscape mode is probably the most underutilized but in my opinion the most powerful way to leverage the power of Humminbird's Mega Live as a real-time fishing tool. And on today's episode of On the Water with the Technological Angler we're going to do a landscape mode deep dive. My objective is to give you the tools you need to leverage that same power of Mega Live's landscape mode to catch more and bigger fish on your next trip. Now, the first step in every successful Mega Live landscape mode adventure is correctly configuring the transducer. So that's where we'll start our deep dive. Now, one of the things that makes landscape mode different from the other Mega Live imaging modes is that we have to flip the transducer out so that the beam is transmitted horizontally through the water rather than vertically. Now depending on how your Mega Live Imaging transducer is mounted, either on an external pole like I have or on the shaft of the trolling motor, when you flip that transducer out, the transmit window, which is the little semicircle, could either be on the top of the transducer or on the bottom of the transducer. Now when I flip my transducer out, my transmit window is on the bottom of the transducer. And knowing what side of the transducer your transmit window is on is going to allow you to set the initial transducer angle. If your transmit window is on the bottom of the transducer when you flip that transducer out, then your initial transducer angle is going to be 80 degrees. That's eight clicks from the transducer being straight up and down. On the other hand, if your transmit window is on the top of the transducer, then your initial transducer angle is going to be 70 degrees, or 7 clicks. Now for me, where the transmit window is on the bottom of the transducer, that initial angle setting of 80 degrees works really well for water that's anywhere between 3 and say 15 feet deep. If necessary, I'll fine-tune my transducer angle by taking a real careful look at my live landscape image. If I see lots of wavy, moving sonar returns that originate from the surface of the water, that tells me that my transducer angle is too shallow. In other words, I have too many clicks. So it's time to adjust my transducer angle by going down by one click. On the other hand, if all I'm seeing on my live landscape image is a very small slice of the bottom, and that slice is really bright, that tells me that my transducer angle is too steep. In other words, not enough clicks. And in that case, I'll go up by a click or two. Subpar definition of known pieces of structure is another reason to adjust your transducer angle, either up or down by a click, until you achieve the definition you expect. first thing we need to realize with landscape mode is that this is a mega live configuration that is really best suited for shallow water. Now what does shallow mean? Well in my mind from my experience you know it's 12 feet or less. 
probably the sweet spot for mega live and landscape mode is between six and 10 feet. Can certainly use a shallower than six. Can certainly use a deeper than 10. Right, but outside of that range, you know, when you get deeper than say 12 feet, when you get shallower than say four feet, just because of the way that the mega live transducer beam is configured, uh, we end up seeing a relatively small portion of the water column and the bottom and just our effective range is more limited. And so you want to think about using landscape mode in shallow water. I think about using mega live in landscape mode every time I'm fishing shallow, no matter what I'm fishing for, bass, crappies, walleyes like I am right now. Anytime I'm in that 10 to 12 foot water or less, I think about using landscape mode because that's going to show me everything in my entire casting window, if you will. So currently, I'm using Mega Live and landscape mode to pick apart a big expanse of weed bed. So out in front of me, I have lots of weeds behind me. I have the main lake basin. And as we all know, weed edges don't grow very cleanly, right? They're not straight. There's lots of projections and points and there's lots of pockets or inside turns. There's a fish that concentrate fish. This is just a little largemouth. And one of the great ways that Mega Live in landscape mode can help you pick apart a big expanse of weed bed like this is to use it to find those key features, the inside turns and the points. So what you're looking at now is a mega live landscape mode image of a really well-defined inside turn. Okay, so all the real bright returns that travel up the left side and then down uh, again on the right side, those are the weeds. Okay, and the dark area in the middle, um, that's just clean bottom. Now you'll notice that not all of the weed returns look the same, right? Some of them are really tightly packed and kind of fuzzy. Other ones are more spread apart, individual little bright returns. And that's because we've got two different kinds of weeds growing in this particular weed bed. We've got some kind of stringy grass. That's what appears as the really densely packed returns without space in between the individual weeds. And then we've got some cabbage as well, right? Those are the ones that show up more as individual re weed returns. Now, right now I have my landscape range set to 90 feet. Okay, which gives me a big, broad overview of everything that's happening inside of my 140 degree wide field of view. Now, if I wanna see more detail on a particular area, let's say for example, we wanna get a closer look at one of the little points on the outside part of the inside turn, or if we see some fish moving around uh, in, in some point of the structure, uh, the way, best way to get more detail is going to be to decrease the range, decrease the landscape range, right? So I can physically reorient the beam, point the beam so that the center of the beam is looking right at that piece of the structure, that area of the view I want more detail in, and then I'll go ahead and decrease my range. Now what that's going to do is take the available data for that region and just fill the whole display with it, right? So I'm gonna be able to see more details in landscape range with a short, or in landscape mode with a shorter landscape range than I will when I have a long range. Long range is gonna be good for overview, short landscape range is gonna be better for detail. Now something you can do with landscape mode 
that you can't do with any of the other Mega Live display modes is create a waypoint and have that waypoint be displayed both on your chart view as well as on your Mega Live imaging display. Now, there are a couple of hardware and setting requirements that must be met if you're going to create waypoints using Mega Live imaging. First, you have to be using the external GPS receiver with heading sensor accessory. Using this accessory allows the system to know what direction your boat is pointing. Second, in your Mega Live settings, you have to have AHRS turned on. AHRS stands for Attitude Heading Reference System and is a collection of sensors inside the Mega Live transducer that allows the system to know what direction the transducer is pointing. Now, when you're using that external GPS receiver with heading sensor and you have the AHRS system turned on, then you can go ahead and create waypoints on your Humminbird Fish Finder as you would normally. As you create those waypoints, you'll see that they're displayed both on the chart view as well as on the Mega Live landscape view. Landscape mode provides us with a couple of tools to help us visualize where that live imaging beam is shining and to help us achieve pinpoint cast placement. The first of these is the boat icon overlay. When you activate the boat icon, you'll see a small boat with an amber wedge displayed in the upper right hand corner of your Mega Live landscape view. That amber wedge represents the area that the Mega Live imaging beam is currently covering. You'll notice that when you reposition the beam, that that amber wedge moves smoothly along with it. Now, if you want that amber wedge to accurately follow along with the beam as you reposition it, and I'm certain that you will, then you'll need to make sure that the AHRS, or Attitude Heading Reference System, is turned on. If AHRS is turned off, you'll still see the amber wedge displayed, but it won't accurately reflect where the beam is pointing, and it won't follow along with the beam as you reposition it. Now, the second of these tools is the range grid overlay, which you can display in a couple of different ways. Now, one range grid style is called rectangular, and here, the range grid is going to be displayed as an array of squares. Now, the second range grid overlay style is called radial, and this is the one that I prefer. Now, the radial range grid does two things. First, it measures distance from the transducer using a series of concentric semicircles. Second, it accurately measures the angle from an object that you see on the landscape view to the center of the landscape beam. If we know both the distance and the direction we have to cast, then we have all the information we need to achieve pinpoint cast placement. Look at that one, huh? That's a decent fish. Same chatterbait Z-Man trailer with another big assist from landscape mode. Back for you guys. Now I would argue that landscape mode is the easiest of all three of the mega live imaging modes when it comes to dialing in your settings to get an optimized image. Now, a big part of that simplicity is that when you're in landscape mode, the auto sensitivity and contrast feature is enabled by default. And in fact, there's currently no way to turn that off when you're in landscape mode. 
Now, even when auto sensitivity and contrast is enabled, we still retain some ability to fine tune the sensitivity and contrast values that are in play to optimize our landscape image. These are called the auto sensitivity and auto contrast offsets and adjusting these values can still have a big positive impact on the quality of your landscape image. Now when it comes to sensitivity, I like to adjust this value to just brighten up the bottom in front of and around the primary structure that I'm observing. Now I don't want that bottom to be too bright from using too high of a sensitivity value because I'm gonna to start to lose detail in the structure and it's gonna become hard for me to see the bright white sonar returns from the fish. Now in soft bottom areas, you're gonna to wanna to use a slightly higher sensitivity, so a couple of clicks higher than 10, in order to brighten up that soft bottom. In hard bottom areas, sand, rock, gravel, things like that, remember hard bottom is bright already, so I'm gonna reduce my auto sensitivity offset a couple of clicks below its default value of 10. In terms of adjusting that auto contrast offset, Remember that when you decrease contrast, you're gonna brighten up the far edges of your range. And when you increase contrast, you're gonna to start to accentuate the dark areas, the sonar shadows. Once I adjust my sensitivity, I'll go in and adjust my contrast so that I can see all the way into the corners of my landscape view and still retain nice, well-defined shadows around the primary structure that I'm observing. Now, other than adjusting our auto sensitivity and auto contrast offset, the only other setting we have to work with in landscape mode is range. Now, under a lot of circumstances, you're gonna be able to see objects at the very far end of a pretty long landscape range. In my hands, it's up to 100 feet and sometimes even more. Now, at those long landscape ranges, you are gonna be sacrificing detail on the far end. And so, in practice, what I tend to do is use a maximum landscape range of say 80 or 90 feet when I'm trying to maximize my coverage. Now when you're ready for a highly detailed look at a piece of structure or the fish that are holding nearby, all you have to do then is reduce your landscape range. In my hands, a landscape range of say 40 to 60 feet is a great option for creating highly detailed mega live landscape views. So optimizing mega live imaging in landscape mode is really just that easy. We're only talking about three settings, auto sensitivity offset, auto contrast offset, and range. Oh, geez, big bite. Just stopped it. There we go, this is a better fish. Oh, big largemouth. Holy moly. Let's take it easy with this one. Because this is the fish we've been looking for all day. I apologize to you bass guys, but I'm going to net it. That's a big largemouth. Gotcha. There we go. What a nice looking fish. You know, we started this morning, I said that landscape mode was probably the most underutilized, but most powerful way to leverage the power of Humminbird's Mega Live Imaging. And I hope that everything we've shown you during our deep dive today has given you the confidence to make Mega Live in landscape mode a part of your everyday fishing routine. Because it'll certainly help you get nice fish like this one. Let's get this baby back in the drink. Hey, I'm Jason Health and the Technological Angler, and all of these northerns and largemouth, and I will see you on the water. Okay.